Alrighty, well it's time to get back into some projects. I'm uh, working on the uh, the Fairbanks one and a half uh, light plant generator again. Uh, if you remember, I think it was uh, not the last video, but the one previous to that. Uh, I had this belted up to an electric motor and uh, just uh, jerry-rigged, you could say, to uh, uh, produce electricity. Uh, this is not my generator. This belongs to uh, I, another uh, engine collector. Uh, he's got the complete uh, home light plant with the uh, one and a half horse engine and the, the big sub base and all that. But um, he was having issues with the generator uh, not working correctly. So I said I'd take a look at it for him. So uh, without, you know, if you want the big background story, you can go uh, see that other video. But uh, I haven't done much with it since that, uh, the video where I had it running. So uh, I decided to get back on it and figure out what the real problem was. Uh, luckily, uh, he was able to do some research and dig up um, a wiring schematic. Uh, for this uh, for this unit right here, uh, as we, uh, he dug up a lot of information actually for it. Here's a uh, an actual just a, a just a, a flat out picture of the routing of all the wires, which is going to come in handy when I go to put it all back together. So uh, it's a real simple thing. It's it's two pole. It's a battery charging generator, 32 volt uh, DC. Um, so anyway, the problem he was having with it uh, was you know, it, well, the engine would run on, and obviously it wouldn't produce any electricity. Now he's not charging batteries with this. He doesn't want to, you know, haul 32 volt battery, uh, a 32 volt battery bank to shows. He just wants to run some lights with it at a show. And um, it was running. Apparently, I th if I remember correctly, it was about two years ago. Was the last time I saw this actually run and, and actually uh, produce electricity, make lights light up. <laughs> So, uh, but then he came to me at a show this past summer and said that uh, it stopped working on him. So, uh, I couldn't really do much troubleshooting at the show grounds. So, just, I said to him, I'll bring it home and I'll, I'll figure it out. So, after going through the diagram, uh, just tracing everything out and checking different things, a couple issues I found. Um, the major one has to do with this uh, reverse current relay. Fairbanks calls it. Um, uh, this winding right here, they call it the voltage coil, is open circuit. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like. I have it already pulled out. Uh, basically, uh, this coil here closes this contact when the generator voltage overcomes the battery voltage enough to charge them. Then you get this contact here closing, which allows the current to flow. So, without going into too much more detail, that's pretty much how it works. So, being he's not charging any batteries at the time, he's just running off of off the lines here, positive and negative, to run some lights. You know, even though the, the, the generator itself is making power, it's not closing this contact, which isn't close. It's not energizing this coil. Well, it is, but the coil's not closing this contact, which isn't giving him any juice. So, um, there was also some problems with the resistor, um, uh, charge rate resistor, but that's be another video. Um, so anyway, let me show you what the reverse current relay looks like. That would be this right here. Uh, these are just a, this is just a starting switch right here. You can crank it, uh, crank the engine with the batteries. Just a big contact here for that. That would be this contact down here, which just goes through the series field and the generator and just acts as a motor. So, but to actually uh, uh, charge, this here, this large contact, normally open contact, is this one up here. So, generator voltage comes up, overcomes battery voltage, closes, no problem. So, there's two coils here. This is the main coil, the current coil, and then there's uh, another coil nestled inside of this one, which is the voltage coil that I showed you that's open circuit. Uh, one side of the voltage coil is right here, and the other one is tapped with the end of the current coil uh, right here. You can see that. And I'll show you what that is. Let me see if I can slip this out of here. Alright, this is the coil set. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. There's one end of the voltage. Oops, sorry. 
one end of the voltage coil right here. <clears throat> the other end, let me put this down. The other end you can see right here. Sorry. Right here, and it comes up and it's soldered on with the other end of the current coil. There's the other end of the current. So this little coil inside here is open circuit. I've checked it multiple ways. Uh, no, no, no doubt about it. There's no way that's going to pull that solenoid in or pull this contactor closed. So, looks like another rewind job. Take this apart, peel it apart, uh, figure out how many wraps, how many windings are in it. It's a, it's a fairly, well I wouldn't say it's a, a large gauge wire, but it's a stranded wire. It's not just a single uh, enameled conductor, so I'll be curious to see how that's insulated in there. But I'll probably just use a solid enamel wire, maybe and maybe 22 or 24 gauge thereabouts. So I'm going to rewind that and go from there. Uh, I mentioned previously about the charge resistor, which is right here. This, well, like I said in the, in the previous video, somebody had, you know, rebuilt this generator at one point. They did a pretty good job. They, you know, cut in the armature or cut in the commutator, rewinding the uh, armature and the field coils. But uh, this is where they made a big mistake. Um, this is a charge rate resistor. Um, well, it's supposed to be multi-tap resistor, but they didn't use any kind of resistance wire. All they used was enameled, you know, winding wire. So there's absolutely no change in, well, a minuscule change in resistance between all these taps because it's only, you know, say a dozen or maybe 20 turns in between each one. So definitely uh, not going to do anything there. So I have some, some uh, nichrome wire here from a little heater I was going to try to use, but this, uh, this, even this doesn't have enough resistance for this resistor, so I'll have to uh, source some of that. But uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated on uh, what's going on with this project. I'm going to slide this coil out and start uh, dismantling it and see what I have to do to uh, rewind it. Alrighty. Alright, so here's the voltage coil slid out of the uh, current coil here. And uh, well, you can see right off the bat, that's where, uh, that was just a little pigtail, that stranded wire. And it's soldered right to that piece of winding wire that looks like probably 30 gauge. Maybe even a little bit smaller than that. Probably a little bit smaller. I don't remember what I used for the, um, the Model F coil rewind, but it looks about the same size. And I think I got plenty of that left over. So... And there, geez, there's there's quite a few windings on here. I'd say it's at least a dozen layers. And there's there's the one right there, the top layer. So, yeah, this will be a nice, uh, fairly easy rewind. Just make a jig up for it, and a little cardboard tube or something, mandrel for it to uh, to wind on. So I get to see another rewind video. I'm looking forward to that. All right.